it is Confirmation Sunday, a wonderful, wonderful celebration of these young people who are going to be getting up in just a little bit and affirming their baptism, confirming their faith. Um, But Confirmation isn't just about them. It is about them, but it's not just about them. It's about what God is up to in their lives, um, about what God has been doing, what God is doing, and what God is going to do. And it's not just about about that, though, either. It's about what God is doing in all of our lives. Confirmation is an opportunity for all of us to reflect back on our, our faith journeys, where, we've, where we have been, where we are now, and what God is up to in our faith moving forward. Last weekend, we were on a retreat with these young people in preparation for this weekend, and that was kind of the theme of the weekend. The students reflected on their faith journeys up to this point, looking through all of the big highlights of their journey, talking about what those were, whether it be baptism or or another retreat or something that happened at VBS or whatever it might have been for them. They also took the time to write faith statements, to talk about where their faith was right now, what God was doing right now in their lives. And that might have included some doubts, some questions, Um, It was all over the place, but they were fantastic. And then we also asked them to look into the future, to think about what is God calling them to in the next couple years of their lives? How are they going to continue to practice their faith moving forward? Because confirmation isn't isn't an end point. It's actually a starting point of a new space in their lives. And so I want to encourage all of you today, as, as these students get up and affirm their faith, to think about Where are you at your faith journey? What is God doing in your life right now? What are your hopes for your faith moving forward as these students have done, as you're going to hear from them in just a few seconds about their faith journeys? And this retreat that we talked about all those things on was really impactful. Um, We give them an opportunity to come up with a theme for today, and their theme that they came up with out of this retreat included light, if you haven't caught on to that by the music that they helped select. And that light came from an experience that you'll hear about in more detail at the, that was an actual mountaintop high when we went up and had a campfire on top of the mountain and they saw the fire that provided the light in this darkness and the city lights out in the valley and the stars and the twinkle of the starlights up in the dark sky. But it wasn't just light that they chose as the theme. It was welcoming light. The way in which God welcomes us with God's arms wide open as that light. So we've got a couple of students who are going to be sharing on this theme, talking about their experiences, not just from the retreat, but their, their whole faith journeys. And as, as they share, I want you all to not only listen, but reflect on your own faith journeys. What has God been doing in your lives What is God doing now, and what are your hopes for your faith journey moving forward? So I want to invite Liza Kung forward to share um, her experience from this past weekend and her faith journey. Hi, I'm Liza Kung, and our theme this year was Welcoming Light. When we went on a retreat last weekend, it was a lot of fun, and we got to learn more about God. On our last night there, we took these hummers up to the top of a mountain and listened to some of the adults and older high schoolers' faith stories. As I listened, I realized how big of an impact God had in their lives and how grateful I am to have a a relationship with Him and grow up knowing Him. I am also very thankful to my parents and Sunday school teachers who got me to where I am today. I know I don't know everything and probably never will, but I know God will stay with me no matter what. One story I thought of while writing this was Jonah and the Whale. Jonah tried so hard to run away from God, and where did he end up? In the belly of a whale. But even there, God was still with him. I love this story because it shows us that even when we have doubt or stray away from God, he will always reel us back in. Even when we stray away from God, he will never stray away from us. He will be there like a rock standing firm and catching us when we stumble and fall. This brings me to a verse, 1 John 1.5. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. Light brings people together. If you have a campfire, someone standing a mile away on a different mountain can still see that light. He leaves the light on for us and will lead us back home. When we were on the retreat sitting around the fire, me and one of my friends noticed that the fire was warm, comforting, and cozy. 
But when we turned around, we saw the dark sky, breathed in the fresh air, and saw the bright stars. This is like how we are with God. When we see new exciting adventures, we want to handle them on our own without him. But when we fail, God is like that comforting fire taking us back in while never leaving our side. Recently, I went to summer camp like I do every year, but this time was different. My eyes were opened and God was calling me, telling me to give myself fully to him and stop carrying my burdens, lay them fully on the Lord. I know I will go through times of darkness, but God uses light and he is the light. Thank you. Eliza talked about this darkness, um, and I'm sure we all have experienced darkness in our lives, and um, hopefully the light that God shines into that. But certainly for these young people, for all of us, the past couple of years with COVID, that COVID has been a deep darkness for many of us. Um, these students have, part of their confirmation journey has been through the COVID years, um, doing confirmation online. I believe that's how their confirmation started and so, Janiah Hall, who's going to share here in a minute, um, she's going to share about her experience with, with that and how her faith journey has been shaped through that darkness and how she has seen light. Good morning, congregation. I am Janiah Hall, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the welcoming light of Jesus through our community. A few years ago, I was young and loved the idea of God and worship surrounded by his name. I love going to church, doing all the fun Bible learning activities, and having the snack of brownies and grapes Miss Kathy provided every Sunday. Those times were fun. I loved the church so much that during those times, I eventually wanted to get more involved with Christ Lutheran Church. So I joined the dance program and choir from 2018 to 2021. I loved that time in my life, being able to express God's word and grace through a beautiful dance of worship and of course, the plays we had for the choir. In between the time of 2019, my family decided we wanted to be baptized. We got baptized in this very here baptismal font. My whole family being able to be baptized together is an experience I will never forget. Fast forward a few years later, after being so in touch with church, God, and being baptized, that sunshine and joy in my life came to an end due to COVID. I was devastated and fell back into some of the bad ways I had before my baptism. The way it struck me hurt so hard that it felt like the beautiful relationship I had created to be close with him was just slowly crumbling away. When I was baptized, I was so excited to have a refreshing start in my faith to change the ways to get closer to Christ. However, I didn't exactly do what I had planned. I ended up further from God than I've ever been. Not being able to go to church anymore and having to just watch online services was not fun for me. I, sorry. I just didn't feel the same. I tried so hard to have the same connection that I had with God. I just couldn't. Church eventually opened back up, so I started going every Sunday I could. And eventually it hit me. That light and spark that was covered by the void of darkness and evil was lit again with good like no other. Still to this day, I thank God for sticking with me every step of the way and letting me be able to see that beautiful golden light again through the community and worship of his word together. I like to relate my story to one of my favorite verses, Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That verse pretty much summed up that no matter how far you are from Jesus, he will always lead you and guide you and be with you every step of the way. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Janaya. I don't know if you caught... Janiah, what she said towards the end, that God will be with you every step of the way. Um, that's a beautiful sentiment, I think, especially as we talk about their theme of welcoming light, um, a theme that continues to run through their faith journeys, through these stories that we're hearing, the ways in which God is with us all the time, through even those darkest times. So Drew Leno is our next speaker, and he's going to share a little bit about his faith story. Come on up, Drew. Good morning. I want you to think about being in a dark room for an entire week. No light has entered this room for a week and it is therefore pitch black. 
In this room, there's a dimmer light switch and a normal light switch. If you were to turn on the lights, which one would you use? You probably don't want to use the normal light switch because you would be blinded. You probably want to very slowly turn off the lights with the light dimmer until your eyes can adjust. When we are walking through our faith journey and our life as well, there are times when we are so far from God, our room might seem pitch black. Maybe it seems this way because of how slowly God is bringing up the lights so that we are not blinded. You're probably wondering by now, what are these lights? To me, these lights represent the little moments in our life that bring us closer to God, little God moments, you could say. God cannot bring up the lights all the way at first if we are in a really dark time because it could blind us, and if we are blinded, how can we find clarity? I think that every day of our life, God finds little ways to turn up the lights a little bit more to draw us closer to him. This is very well represented by a smart home. When you walk down a hall in a smart home, the lights turn up as you walk down the hall. There are lights above you or maybe to the side of you down the hall, but only the ones right next to you are lit up. To me, this represents the walk of our faith journey. God will always light up our way, but we may be trying to look too far down the hall to even notice the lights that are shining bright right next to us. This can give us the perception of darkness when in fact it is very light, but we just aren't paying attention to notice the lights right next to us. In life, do we get stuck looking too far ahead to even notice the God moments and blessings of today? I'd actually like to share a personal anecdote about this idea. There had been a week or so at one point that I had just blown off praying. I would tell myself I was too tired or other excuses like that. At the end of the week on Saturday night, I basically told myself, no more pushing it off. It doesn't matter how tired I am. I got in bed and started praying and came across a really bad feeling. Usually, when I'm praying, and this may relate to you as well, you feel like there's God's presence. It feels like you are doing more than just thinking words. You don't feel so alone. But that night, I felt completely and utterly alone, like I was just thinking words to think them. I tried so hard to feel a connection with God, but it just wasn't working for me. I really didn't sleep well the rest of the night. The next morning, I heard a message by the title of, You're not as far as you think you are. This, was com this completely changed everything for me, and I believe turned me in the right direction. God was using this event to make my faith stronger. This story ties well into John 13, 7. Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Jesus is basically saying that we may, may not understand what he is doing in the moment, but if we look back on it, we can see he used all the bad times to grow our faith. God was with us the whole way. So as you can see, our students um, have had wonderful journeys of faith to this point. Um, and those three that you just heard reflect, I think, all of them that are preparing to affirm their faith here in just moments. Um, this, this journey of, of moments of certainly darkness, as I think we can all relate, but this realization through this confirmation process that God is always there. That God is always present to us. And that really is the good news, isn't it? That, that God is present with us all the time, whether we recognize it or not. Those little God moments that Drew talked about. The light shining in the darkness. Those little spots of light that we see throughout our lives on a regular basis. That is God showing up, God being present. We just have to open our eyes to be able to see what God is up to to see God right there next to us every step of the way. The journey that these young people have been on has been, um, it's been a blessing to be a part of it, just a small part of it these past nine months, to see how they have grown in that time, to see how they are recognizing the ways in which God is at work. And that's really what confirmation is, is all about. It's this journey, first learning about who God is, who is this God that we come and worship every Sunday? Who is this God that we proclaim on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis? This God that we pray to regularly. And then witnessing to this God in community, joining them together in community, just like we as a larger church join together in community, recognizing who, seeing God in each other, in the ways in which we come together as community. And I think when we do that, we begin to see God at work in our own lives. And when we begin to see God at work in our own lives, well, it's at that point that we can start sharing that light. Sharing that light 
that welcoming light to all the world. This is the confirmation journey, but not just the confirmation journey that we might experience in middle school, but for our whole lives. Understanding who God is, seeing God in the midst of community, helping us to see God at work in our lives, and then sharing that with the world. That's really what's one of the calls in our baptism that we're called to, right? Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so these young people have been on this journey. They continue this journey with the next step as they, they claim this faith as their own. They have witnessed God at work in their lives. They'll continue to struggle, as we all do, to see that. But it's in community like this that we help to show them how God is at work. And we help each other. It's not just them. It's all of us helping each other see how God is at work in our lives. Seeing those glimpses of light, recognizing that God is always with us, that God's arms are always outstretched like the prodigal son story that was read earlier, that God is always there by us, welcome, welcoming us in with arms wide open, with love and grace and mercy for each and every one of us, whether we're in the darkness and we see those glimpses of light coming with us all the time. And thanks be to God and amen for that.